My name is John Mainville, and this is a story about my best friend and myself. We were both raised on the same reservation in northern Ontario, and yet as we grew older, we chose different directions. I chose a life of sobriety while he did not. How could we come from the same place but take two different paths? I decided to find out. Shit you at the door. <laughs> How's it going? Is it, that, is it that windy out there? I've seen a lot of shit in my day. You know, growing up around parties and shit, I was always seeing people, you know, whip out nice good lines and do that. For instance, waking up to catch the bus. Sometimes all the drunks would be passed out, sometimes they'd still be going. And like, if I forgot to set my alarm clock, my alarm clock would be someone like, hey, you know, hear that? And then I'm like, whoa, get up and go do what I gotta do. After a while, it kind of makes you wonder, like, why the hell do they do it day in and day out? Like, what is it that satisfies them to keep doing it? So basically, curiosity got me. It had nothing to do with stress at all. I didn't do it because I was feeling shitty or anything. I did it because I was curious. Throughout all these years, my mother saw everything. Maybe she knows why we took two paths. When I think about the, the difference in Vinny and John, I think about how John grew up not only knowing, but living um, and experiencing traditional values and the customs. It's just inherent within our culture, within the, the old traditional beliefs that alcohol and drugs had no part of it, uh, part in it. And the teachings that we received uh, around that is that if you were to drink alcohol, on, uh, for any of us to drink alcohol, um, we, pay, we pay a price for that. And... Um, John grew up knowing that. You ever wish for change? Change, eh? Yeah. Well, if I really did, I would change, you know? But what about our other childhood friends? What does he think their lives are like now? Where are their lives going? Yeah. Probably no different than mine nor yours. I mean, I don't see them on TV or anything, so they're probably just living the same life as we are. I don't know. Quite a few of them turned into dropouts, too. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, like Christ. At least half of them that I know of are dropouts, too. That's Vinny on the guitar back when we used to play. I'm now living in Winnipeg, playing in a band and trying to complete my education. Again, here's my mom. The other thing about being the youth is that you, overall people feel like you're alone, that you nobody understands me. All my troubles are, are uh, like nobody understands what I'm going through. And in the the culture, we under like it's just inherent in everything we do that we're not alone. Like I've taught my children that we are never alone. We have our Indian names, we have our clans; those are our helpers. We're in nature, like right now, being alone. I, I always taught my my children that these trees back here, they're here to help us. And they're here, to, like they're living beings. So no matter where I am, no matter where a person is, we're never alone. What about people that care about you? What about people that care about me? You say the best way you can help someone out is to just let them go. And that's honestly true. Just let them go. Let them hit rock bottom. Let them, you know, live life. Let them find out for themselves. John. You're fucking awesome that you've been sober all these years. Man, if I had like money to give you, I would. If I had like a little fucking badge or something to give you, I would. But I don't, all I can see is right on, you know. Congrats. Cause I swear you're probably like the only person I know that's been sober all of his life. 
Like, fuck, your willpower is probably way stronger than mine will ever be. It's awesome. Even though we've both taken two directions, with the passing of time, perhaps one day, our paths will converge. <laughs>